Welcome back to another high-level match of StarCraft 2. What I've got for you today is a Terran versus Zerg, where we find ourselves on Stargazers. Spawning right here in the top left corner of the map, playing with the red Zerg drones from South Korea, we have Ragnarok. His opponent in the top right, playing here with the blue Terran SCVs. He's from Brazil, but he's been living in the Netherlands for the last couple of years. He goes by the nickname of Kalazur. Alrighty, so Kalazur starting off this particular match rather greedily. A command center first on Stargazers. We see it from time to time, especially in the pocket base right over here. Certainly a little bit on the greedier end when you take it in the natural. Obviously one of the problems you run into if you do this build on the ladder is that there may very well already be Zorklings running across the map at this point in the game. Very good build though if you know who you're facing off against. And Ragnarok of course is a bit of a macro Zerk. Unlikely that he's going to cheese you, and as a matter of fact, even though Kalazur is playing a very greedy game, Ragnarok is trying to outgreed him by going for a triple hatchery opener. So he did go for a spawning pool, but a very delayed gas. At this point, he's got an overlord as well above that barracks, and you know what? He decides to skip all Zirkling production. So he now knows, judging by the timing of that barracks finishing, that it's not a very quick Reaper opener, so he doesn't really have to worry about a whole lot. He knows at this point that it's likely going to be a command center first here from the Terran, and because of that, he does not need any Zerglings. So both players already trying to outsmart one another, trying to play the greediest game possible. Generally, though, I do think that Ragnarok is favored in this particular matchup, so... First off, Ragnarok is really good in Zerg versus Terran, but he's also at a rank 12 in the world overall right now. Kalazur currently at a rank 32, and as you probably know, the skill level difference, the higher you go, really becomes quite significant. Ragnarok right now considered to be the third highest ranked from South, or the third highest ranked Zerg rather from South Korea, with only Dark and Solar ahead of him since Rogue just recently started up his mandatory military service. We're not going to be seeing his games for some time. It's a little bit sad. Roke, of course, one of the contenders for the title of the GOAT. The greatest StarCraft II player of all time. Although, I do believe that Serral is the one that we probably should be discussing primarily when it comes to... Uh, yeah, deciding who the greatest SC2 player ever is. Anyways, because of that, Ragnarok ended up moving one slot up. So now, the third highest ranked Zerg from Korea, the rank 12 in the world overall. Kalazur currently the fifth highest ranked Terran player outside of South Korea with Clem, Hero Marine, Time, and Spirit ahead of him. Now look at this. Kella even going for a third command center already as well. So one of the problems you run into, right, when you play a build like this as Terran, is that you lose pretty much all vision. So at this point, he didn't even see the pocket base. So this looks like a two-base opener to me, right? I guess he saw the timing right there of the gas, and he probably clicked on it, so he knows how much gas was mined. But at this point, Kalazor doesn't know too much from the Zerk. Zerg can play a very greedy game, but not actually sacrifice a whole lot of vision, especially when they go for the Nematized Carapace upgrade. So that's Overlord Speed. In just a moment, Ragnarok is going to scout out exactly what it is that he's going up against him. It's a good old 1-1-1. Now, Kalazur, again, he hasn't seen much. This could be like two base Muta, this could be a Road Ravager push, it could be a variety of openers, and he just still just decides to go. Ooh, a fusion core even coming up. Okay, it gets scouted right away. Uh, he still decides to go for a Raven regardless. So, yeah, Kelazor playing a uh, strong round of rock, paper, scissors here so far. Not really, uh, yeah, in a very comfortable spot here. I think if you pull this build off on the ladder, you'll find yourself in trouble when your opponent is not playing the macro game like Ragnarok is. But in this particular match, I do believe that it's all working out. Okay, so CC first into very quick third command center. Blind Raven into straight up battle cruisers is the build order right here from Kella. Here's the auto turret. So, of course, the Raven can pop down a little auto turret and just back off. It's just chilling over here by the watchtower, getting five kills. Not bad whatsoever. Lair coming up, by the way, at the pocket base, which is kind of interesting. You get a little bit of additional health, of course, on that structure, so maybe that will. Yeah, help him keep it alive for a little while longer. More likely, though, it is just to make sure that uh, he could continuously produce queens right here on these other two hatcheries. Anyhow, Ragnarok going back in just to confirm that the fusion core was not just bait, because it did seem a little bit suspicious, but no, he did just let it finish. And now it's going to be 
factories on the back of this too. So it's straight Terran mech right here from Kalazur. And I'm pretty sure that Ragnarok already knows. Hello. Ooh, Brenda sleeping on a job for a little bit. Ragnarok probably not expecting these units to come in just yet. Normally they're accompanied by the battlecruiser. But obviously Kalazur knows that Zerg players know that, you know, it's usually gonna be when the battlecruiser come in that the Hellions also start moving more aggressively. But suddenly they actually end up dealing quite a bit of damage. Yeah, that being said, that was a lot of better crew. Or sorry, that was a lot of Hellions. So 10 Hellions here in total. Yeah, I mean, resource-wise, I guess it's fine. But it's nothing too amazing. Hellions, though, when playing Terran Mech, are more or less just a stepping stone. Your main limiting resource... There's the battle cruiser, by the way. It's not jumping across, which I think is the right call. He doesn't know if there's already a Spire done, right? So Spire is coming up, but... Anyways, um, you don't really need a whole lot of minerals in order to run Terran Mech. Usually you spend all of your gas and then leftover resources will go to Hellion production. I mean, don't tell the Hellions that, but you guys are literally just a stepping stone. I know, I know, it kind of sucks. You're good against Zerklings, of course. They can be very helpful as well in certain stages of the game, but... Usually they are your mineral dump. He's playing incredibly greedy, though. My god, okay. Yeah, if this was any sort of timing attack here from Ragnarok, got a feeling that Kalazur would have been in a lot of trouble, but this is the way that Ragnarok likes to play, so I'm not surprised to see it in this game. And I think that Kalazur basically is just, uh... Yeah, he's just saying to himself, yo, if this is gonna be an aggressive Zerk, I would be in a lot of trouble. But the chances of him being aggressive are really not that big, and... Got a feeling that on Stargazers, he probably cannot withstand all of those possible expansions that are available. Eleven Corruptors are coming up. This is an excellent game so far, though, for Kella. I'm really liking the situation for him. Um, Eleven Corruptors are coming up. Look at the production tab as well, right? He's just getting everything. They're going to be targeting down that battle cruiser. Second battle cruiser is now going to go to the pocket base. Okay. A lot of harassment all over the map. Corruptors take a while to come out, man. I feel like I've seen them on the production tab for some time. We need to teleport that bad boy back home. Hello? Hello? Hello! Okay. We'll be able to keep it alive. Not taking such a chance on the second one, but... All of the battle cruisers live, and that's really the most important thing at this stage of the game. Because, of course, you can repair these bad boys back up to full HP. And that means that they can live to harass another day. Jimmy over here. It looks like the guy who's getting repaired, but... <laughs> it's actually the, the battleship up above. Nobody knows how it works. The Corruptor's actually hunting down the BCs as well, but they couldn't find him. Okay. So, it's actually the Hellion as well as the Cyclone improvement upgrades over here. So, Blue Flame as well as the Lock-On improvement. Very powerful set of abilities. Not normally what we see, but I like this move here from Ragnarok a lot. Ragnarok is reading this game correctly. Swarm hosts are by far the most underused Zerg unit, but they are very strong in certain scenarios. And whenever Terran is setting themselves up for a turtle game, especially with Terran mech, of course, since Marines are pretty good at gunning those units out of the sky, um, especially when it comes to playing yeah, against this type of Terran style, swarm hosts are really good. I can, however, okay, nice little trap right there. Those queens are not going anywhere. I can, however, imagine that Ragnarok doesn't have a lot of practice against this sort of strategy recently, because most of the Terran players in South Korea do practice that infantry-based army instead. So this is definitely a little bit different, and I don't think he's played a whole lot of that unit composition in a while. Look at that, the Queen's actually taking a lot of damage. Yeah, I really like what Kelazur is doing here. So the problem you run into with Swarm Host play, so they're out right now, is that you're maxed. So, Ragnarok right now, maxed in supply, 200 out of 200, and his army is really not that big. Okay, here's the first Swarm Host wave. It's gonna go towards the pocket base of the Terran player. Links and Banes, not connecting, Kalazur is on point. This is the first time, though, that Kalazur sees the Swarm Host play. Good lift up, evacuates on out of there. Honestly, A-OK. -okay. Yeah, not a whole lot of damage done at all. The first waves are really important when it comes to the Swarm Host play. And so far, he's gotten very little done. So Kalazur's main goal at this point is to try and max out. Preferably with all the upgrades too. Now, he already invested into those double armory pretty early on. Oh, Corruptor's actually using a Caustic Spray ability and now just 
dealing damage here to the Orbital Command. Obviously, they cannot hit ground when they don't have their ability. So, there you go. Should be A-OK. Here's another... Uh, oh, I thought it was... OK, that's the Locust Wave. I thought it was another Locust Wave on the minimap. Anyways, here's another attack from our Zerg player moving forward. This one will be a lot more successful. Yeah. So, those types of waves are why Terran players hate playing against Swarm Hosts. The main reason is that, well, every time you see those Locusts flying in, something dies. And for Zerg, those waves are essentially free. Doesn't really have to spend a lot of money on those. Okay. Continued Battlecruiser production as well here for a bit, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah, we have four Battlecruisers out right now. I actually think Battlecruisers are excellent. I wouldn't even mind seeing a third armory just to get the flyer attacks upgraded too. Anyhow, I think what Kelezer is probably looking to do is just make one really large death ball and then move across the map. This is a really great read though from Ragnarok because if he would have decided to go like Road Ravager or something like that, he would be in a lot of trouble. Here we go. This is the strat here from the Zerk. Now, none of these attack waves with Lings and Banes are going to be particularly cost efficient. Hey, the Banelings don't show up in the battle report. Interesting. Anyhow, uh, they're not particularly cost efficient if it's accompanied by other units than just the Locust. But Kelazor is gonna run out of resources here eventually. So that's essentially the strategy right now that Ragnarok is aiming for. Fifth Command Center is coming up, so that's one of the bases that we should really not allow here as a Zerg. He's still harassing with the Hellions. The Hellions honestly have been excellent in this game. Usually it seems like a bit of an afterthought for most Terran players, but I don't mind it at all. I don't like the Swarm Host waves towards this base. Okay, now that's kind of clever, I guess. <laughs> Swarm Host Corruptor. Land! 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 Swarm Host Corruptor, apparently a match made in heaven. Yep, there it is. Should have landed it a little bit sooner, man. You wanted to get it back on that location. Anyways, I don't usually like those attack waves towards the pocket base, but it ended up working out just fine here. Okay. Well, here comes the Terran army. Butter cruisers are going to be able to technically jump on over towards the main Terran force as well in a heartbeat. But they may very well be needed over there already because, well, oh my god, this is an excellent fight right here for Ragnarok. Normally what we see from Zerks is waiting a little bit longer, right? Usually, yeah, now they show up. Now you guys are way late to the party. That was way too late. Normally, Zerg players wait until the Terran is a little bit deeper onto the creep. So I think probably Ragnarok was most likely to engage when Terran got to like this intersection. So Zerg could come in from as many angles as possible. But Rack had a cooldown available on his Locust and he figured, you know what? I'm just gonna send the units in. If I can get a good fight in when the battle cruisers are distracted, it should work out pretty well for me. Mass Thor coming up. Thor is pretty good, especially when it comes to dealing with, like, you know, the heavy hitters from the Zerg. But Ragnarok is not going for an army worth of heavy hitters. It's mostly just a Ling Bane. I guess it's giving, like, these, yeah, these, these Corruptors a bit of an issue. And with the Corruptors taken out of the engagement, I guess the battle cruisers can get a lot of damage done. So maybe that's the idea. Yeah. So a round of Thors into a round of siege tanks, and now additional battle cruiser production. Um, at this point, the battle cruisers just don't deal as much damage as you'd like them to, right? Like they really should should have a couple of those upgrades. So we have plus three done here. I really believe we need to go for the plus one flyer attacks here very soon as well, Keller. Problem is, Kelazor kind of broke at this point. He did establish the base over here on the right side, so that's nice. Okay, very nice set of Yamato guns. One of the battle cruisers, though, ended up going down. Tactical jump is available. And they decide to get on out of there. Here's those SCVs, though, that we were talking about just now. No planetary forces in this location, so that's another 18 of those workers down the drain. Locust Wave once again up north. Ragnarok creating a contain on his opponent with... One of the stranger unit compositions. Ling Bane and Roach on one hand, we have Swarm Hosts on the other hand, and then somehow he's got a third hand with Corruptors as well. It's a funky unit comp, but it's working out. 
Galazor was planning on, yeah, just fighting his opponent with one massive army, but he got shot down because those battle cruisers were camping on the other side of the map. Got a little bit greedy there with his unit movement. Uh, because of the Ling Bane, though. Okay, that was a really nice catch. Because of the Ling Bane, it's not like our Zerg has a lot of money in the bank. Normally, with Battle Crew, or sorry, with uh, Swarm Host play, we see Zergs with thousands of resources in the bank. But that's not really happening in this game. It's not like you can just uh, whip out an entirely different unit composition here in a heartbeat as well. It's mostly because of those, uh, yeah, constant Ling Bane barrages that he's been trading out. Okay, this is nice. Assuming we have tactical jump. Yep. Getting out of there once more. Couple of Zerklings here, being obnoxious on the right side of the map. This hurts a lot. Yeah. So despite the fact that Ragnarok didn't, you know, create a container around his opponent's bases, he didn't dig a moat or anything like that, he doesn't have the castle surround it, he's still successfully containing his opponent on just a handful of bases while taking his entire side of the map. That being said, Kelazor is approaching maxed out once again. He filled the first time, he went for that max army to the other side of the map. But now this army is even bigger since his SCV count is quite a bit lower. And the upgrades are quite a bit better as well. Burrow available, by the way. Love to see that. I wonder if it's time to add on ghosts here in the mix as well. Probably not. It's just that there's a good chance that Zerk is going to transition away from this awkward unit composition of him. To, for example, Mass Brute Lord or something along those lines. And I guess the Thors are still going to be able to deal with that relatively easily as well. We should really see a repair, though, to bring those units back up to full. Base at the 6 o'clock position attempted by Rack, but not going to happen. Here's another Locust Wave to watch that pocket base. Okay. Okay, another engagement over there. Battle cruiser so. Constantly getting some damage done, right? So I do like that quite a bit. Yeah, I'm not sure why we're not getting battle cruiser upgrades. I really think that that would be fantastic. So the flyers are currently at plus two. Wouldn't be surprised if we're gonna see some more of those upgrades coming up in a moment as well. But here's the second wave of maxed out Terran armies moving out. Kalazur is ready to go in. He needs to siege up at the right moment. There's the Swarm Host once again available with their Locust. He needs to somehow, some way, manage to shut that down. Four Thors are still on the production tab, so this isn't really a maxed out Terran army. Because that supply is, of course, already paid for. Okay, when do we commit with the Locust? Man, this looks like such a pathetic little Zerk army. He's setting up a, uh, He's setting up the biggest surround ever. Where's those battle cruisers, by the way? I would imagine they're gonna teleport in. Dude, I don't like this camping spot, dude. This is not... Uh, mm, very dangerous. Okay, tanks are unseached. It's time to go. Locust Wave coming out right now. Ling's Banes, Roaches, Ravagers. Well, and a couple Corruptors just hanging out above. Mm. I don't know why those battle cruisers are just so disconnected from this main force. I guess he saw that there were already those corruptors nearby, but if that was the case, they probably should have been moving to the other side of the map, creating a distraction, pulling the corruptors away from the main battle, and then teleporting in with the DCs. Right? Like. Hmm. At least strategically, that would make a lot more sense, rather than just kind of hanging them out at the fifth base. <laughs> Maybe he was a little bit concerned for like a Zerkling run by or something along those lines. Okay, that was a better fight for sure for Terran, but not quite ideal. Okay, now Vipers are coming out as one. I think Vipers are going to be excellent. The main limitation for Vipers is the amount of actions per minute that they require, but imagine a couple blinding clouds right there in the mix. Another reason why I do believe that Ghost would be a pretty good addition. Maybe a couple of Ravens would also be kind of cool. Anyhow. The Battle Cruiser's still getting some work in. But now working on that Hive. Which is quite annoying here. Locust Wave. Okay, moving over towards the right side of the map once again. The Hive may actually end up going down. 
the raptors are way in the middle of the map right now, so they're not gonna be able to make it home in time. But that's the hive, picked off. Okay. Galazurus trying to acquire a new base, and he really needs a new one. Ah, uh, that's too greedy. Yeah. He really needs a new one. Because these bases are running out. Bane base, natural, pocket base, third. All of these bases are running low on resources. So either you go for one more massive wave of an all-in. Oh my god, there's even some abductions right now added into the mix as well. Yeah, oh, blinding cloud, sure, why not? Or you uh, try to establish more economy. Speaking of more economy, Ragnarok right now taking the base down south. Now is apparently the time, though, since he's cleared out a bunch of those battle cruisers to make a transition towards Brute Lords. This is not scouted here. Thors do outrange Brute Lords, so they're pretty good. But usually the answer to Thors is just more Brute Lords. If it's like 8 Brute Lords versus 8 Thors, the Thors will end up winning. But if it's 18 Brute Lords <laughs> versus 8 Thors, they will get absolutely slapped. A new Hive coming right up. The Swarm Host finally taken care of. Ragnarok is running out of money though. Like he's got some minerals in the bank, but not a lot of gas. He's still getting a good amount of income, but he's been, yeah, with an income advantage for the foreseeable, <laughs> for, well, for a long time here, and probably the foreseeable future too, but it's not looking too hot for him here. Even though I do like the engagements that he's been taking quite a bit. There's some abductions once again, taking a couple of those Thors out of the equation. Without Thors, oh my god, yeah, this army is just not as good. Without Ghosts, the Terran late game just looks so much weaker, right? I think that Ragnarok was probably also anticipating a little bit of that, uh, yeah, ghost production, so maybe that's why he hesitated making those spellcasters, but there's a lot of damage being done right here by the Zork player, who's still happily, well, close to maxed out. Kalazur now at 145 supply. Forced to smash his final piggy bank here, because I don't think he's going to be able to get a whole lot more mining out of these units. Yeah, SCVs. Trying to make a move towards the bottom right corner, which is where Kalazur's mining base is located, but... It's gonna be very difficult to hold on, and even if you do hold on, right, and you move all of your units in that direction... Zerk is gonna mine a gold base in the meantime, which Kalazur just scanned for as well, so he knows exactly what he's going up against. Strategically incredibly well played here from Ragnarok. Despite the fact that he probably doesn't have a lot of practice against this sort of opener. Yeah, Kalazur is uh, handled here quite nicely. I mean, obviously it's been on a razor's edge for a lot of those engagements. Couple tanks sieged up a little bit better. Maybe the battle cruisers in those right places at the right time would have made a big difference too, but... I like a Korean Zork player spot here quite a bit better than Kalazur's now. Okay, very ambitious couple of Brute Lords here. But there's a huge Zork army on the back of it as well. Not too many Corruptors, but at least enough to push back those battle cruisers. They're gonna technically jump, but one of them has already fallen. Yeah, okay, the Bailing's not entirely sure whether or not they should commit. Now the Hellions are coming back home as well, but the Roaches are the ones that really, yeah, are the problem here. They are taking care of some of those Thors. Ah, you know what? I say that. The Thors have a lot of HP. Command Center is gone once again, but there's still another one available. Kalazur is going to be flying that one towards the bottom right in corner. Rack still has money in the bank, so he can keep trading like this, but only for a little while longer. We're getting to the point where the entire map is mined out. Yeah, he bruised a lot of those Terran units, but he didn't kill them. And assuming there's going to be a little bit of money for Kalazur to just repair those units back up to full, they are going to be great again in the next engagement. Still no ghosts available, and I don't think he's gonna be able to afford them at all in this match. So, yeah, infestors are coming up as well. Okay, here we go once more. Another attack wave here from the Zerg. Trying to hit here before those units are all back up to full HP. Roach is dealing a lot of damage. Battle cruisers, okay. Being taken care of as well, I think. Yep, and that's the last one going down too. One more Brute Lord available here, but that one also gets sniped. And with additional Thor reinforcements, what exactly are you going to do with the Corruptors? 
Do you really want to spend your last money here as a Zerk, morphing these into Brute Lords, or do you just fly them around and maybe do some caustic spraying? I think it's gonna be that last option here, yeah. Because morphing them into Brutes may not necessarily be ideal. Is there enough for the Zerk player to push back this Terran Force right over here? This is a maxed out Terran upgrade, right? Like, this is this is not your early game Thor. These units are incredibly powerful. Okay, that base has been taken care of. Kalazur taking a couple of excellent engagements. No Hellbats over here in the mix, though, other than the one right over there. Ugh, corrosive balls do connect with some of those units. Okay, apparently the answer here is Neuroparasite. Ragnarok it has got five infestors. They are completely unscouted. Obviously, a scan can still reveal them, but at this point, Kalazur does not know about the infestors whatsoever. This is actually a very close game. Okay, he's gonna go in for another move, I believe, but this Zerk army doesn't look that big. Corrosive Biles? Okay, split against? Good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the Corruptors are just kind of dead weight here, so the supply count is a bit deceiving. I mean, they can maybe use their cooldown every once in a while, right? Whenever there's, like, nothing else to do, you can, yeah, do a little bit of this. And... you can't. I am mostly concerned here for these Infestors. If they get scanned and killed... I actually do believe that Ragnarok is at that point in a lot of trouble. He doesn't have a very good army here to deal with these units at all, and he's running out of juice. That being said... If those Infestors can go in and Neural Parasite all these units... Oh my god, I think that's the plan. I think he's trying to go in for a Neural Parasite on maybe the Siege Tanks or the Thors. It doesn't really matter all too much. Just take any of those units, make them change sights. Even if it's just a moment. Yeah, Kalazur completely caught with his pants down. Loses a lot of units. Ragnarok wisely moves back out of the Siege Tank range. Good reaction right there though from Kala, despite the fact that he didn't know what he was going up against. He scanned and immediately got rid of those infestors. That could have been a lot worse. Couple of brute lords now harassing the base. Okay, so two of the corruptors morphed into brutes. Just to harass whatever income is still happening here inside of the main base of the Terran. Another siege tank gets sniped down as well. Units wandering a little bit too far forward. Very careful now. Um, at this point, only four Thors remain. Soon to be only two, I think. Yeah. And at that point, I think that the Brute Lords are an excellent option once again here for the Zerg. Two more. These are the last two uh, Thors right now. Two more Thors also get sniped. The final bit of mining here from the Terran player gets demolished. And after a half hour of going back and forth and back and forth, it is indeed Ragnarok who obtains the victory, but he certainly had to fight for it. Hey, if you enjoyed watching this video, I upload new content pretty much every single day. Make sure you hit the subscribe button as well as the little bell icon so you get notified as soon as future content goes live. Besides this YouTube channel, I also have the More Loco channel, which is where I post completed games that I've streamed on Twitch. I also upload a lot of custom campaigns for StarCraft 2 that I've completed, so you might want to go check it out. A link is down below in the description of this video. Hey, for now though, thank you for watching, have a great rest of your day, don't forget to smile, and I'll see you once again in the next one.